BioBalance HealthCast episode 252, Men and ED. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So you operate a full-spectrum medical practice focusing on hormone replacement therapies Mm -hmm. for men and for women. My experience as a counselor in talking to men as they age and begin to develop age-related issues Mm -hmm. is the most central focus of their awareness has to do with their ability to maintain erections and perform sexually. Mm -hmm. There's so much more about the aging process that testosterone replacement involves in terms of muscular uh, structure, the ability to stand upright, the ability to walk and have balance, the ability to avoid <laughs> having diabetes, things. the ability to not have heart attacks, all those kind of things. But the question that they want to know about is, can I get an erection and can I still be uh, an athlete sexually? Because mm-hmm. their identity seems to be so wrapped up in their capacity to perform. So I know that when men, or I'm assuming, I'm going to ask you, when <laughs> men come to see you to say, am I a candidate for what you do, there are two assumptions that they will make. One is, you just sell this stuff to anybody that walks in the door Mm -hmm. so I can just stop in and get some. (laughs) And the other is, uh, what I really want to know about is, is this going to help me sexually? True. So are are those assumptions valid, and is that what really happens? In in general, Uh when... um, Men come to me or actually send their information to me first. Mm -hmm. The process is they send their history and we get blood work and I look at both together and then determine whether I'm going to be able to help them or not. And in the symptomology, in the things they check off. Yes. Is their self described list of concerns. Right. Right. Of why they're coming or. Yeah. Or just symptoms that are associated with testosterone loss that I'm trying to figure out how many they have, or do they have valid ones, or could this be something else? I look through their list, and then I um, I decide whether I'm going to be able to help them or not. But the biggest one on there, the one that is pivotal to them, is erectile dysfunction. They That's almost 100% of the time checked, along with fatigue and insomnia and anxiety attacks, loss of muscle mass, feeling old, having no confidence. All of those things are very important to life. And all of those things are lost as we get older, secondary to loss of testosterone. So I, I have to be much more objective than they are. Mm-hmm. I'm asking these questions because I want to know the full spectrum of symptoms they have. Well, because erectile dysfunction is a broad category term. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you can have trouble getting an erection at all. Mm-hmm. You can have trouble getting one that satisfies you and your partner in terms of firmness and duration. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and all that's lumped under erectile dysfunction. So when you start to say, well, you're having these problems, what kind of problems mm-hmm. are you having? That's right. And, and they have to describe them. Once they're with, once we're having our conversation, mm-hmm. once I've determined that giving them testosterone will help them mm-hmm. in erectile dysfunction and all the other symptoms, then we're having a conversation together. We sit down for a long consultation mm-hmm. and go over every symptom that is related to testosterone and all of the other things they have they have that is secondary to aging that we might be able to right. catch and prevent disease down the line. So I'm I'm looking at it really in three ways. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at their lab and their history such that I I evaluate can I help them? Can I help them with the things they really want me to help them with, mm-hmm. which is usually sexual function. Right. And is there something else that I'm finding that I can help them with or send to another doctor? that will also make them healthier. So, so you do a lot of that. You do a lot of cross-referrals to other doctors mm-hmm. to eliminate concerns or deal with ancillary concerns. Yes, or things that will interfere with my treatment. Sometimes there will be a medical problem like hemochromatosis. That's a, a genetic illness that mm-hmm. causes you to have too much iron in your body. And, for example, if, if, if I see somebody who on their lab test, it looks like that's what they have, I'm either going to send them first to a GI doctor to evaluate that and decide whether that's really the problem, or I'm going to send them for more tests and then, if they have the problem, go to another doctor. But the reason that's important is 
if I fix everything and every hormone is in, in perfect harmony with each other mm -hmm. and, and the patient should have all their symptoms resolved and they don't because they have too much iron in their system, right. it obliterates the benefit of testosterone. So I have to have that fixed for them actually to feel and, and resolve their problem. Mm -hmm. So it's important that I rule out that illness. So that's one of the things that I can pick up early on. When I'm just looking at their lab before they've walked in, before I've ever established a doctor-patient relationship, I can find things that I then send them first to somebody else for some things that, that can get resolved or be treated. Or tell them, I don't think I'm going to be able to help you. So you are a specialist in hormone replacement and hormone balance. Mm -hmm. But there are other illnesses that are identified in that process that you know some things about, but you don't specifically treat. Yes. And so then you have a, a, a coterie of other physicians that you refer to or who refer to you when, uh, I remember you telling me about a neurologist who had a patient that was having a lot of uh, severe headaches mm -hmm. that they couldn't find their classic answers for in their specialty. Mm -hmm. so they referred them to you for what you do and you were able to solve the problem. This is so, common. So it goes both ways. This is common in almost every field of medicine. Mm -hmm. If we actually pick up on something that is not in our field, we refer to a doctor that we know and send that patient to them to take care of that particular specialty problem. And then usually they come back to us for other types of care. Okay. It's like it's like primary care. Primary care is, is really about treating what can be treated and if you find something that's a specialist problem, you send you send somebody there and then bring them back for the rest of your care. So, so that's what I'm doing. So in, in the written summary that we post with these podcasts, <laughs> yeah. one of the words that jumps out at me off of the page mm -hmm. uh, is hypogonadism. Can right. can you use layman's language for that? What are we talking about? Hypogonadism is is the lack of testosterone from the testicles. The testicles aren't making enough testosterone. Okay. Okay. So that means either there's a brain issue that's not sending stimulation to the testicles, or there's a testicular issue that that this man is not making enough testosterone. Even though the brain's stimulating the testicles, it's almost like male menopause. Then the testicles don't make enough to actually give them a level to feel normal. That starts that domino effect of all these other illnesses starting. So, so you male menopause, in quotes. Uh, <laughs> do men then who have hypogonadism because they're of an age where their testicles are not generating enough testosterone, mm -hmm. uh, do they go through like mood cycles and, <laughs> and get teary and temperamental or angry? I mean, do they get all the classic jokes that we make about women who are menopausal. Does the same thing apply to them? Actually... Because I've been accused of that. <laughs> That's why I'm <laughs> qualifying and stopping for a second to think about whether we're talking about you or everyone. Yeah, yeah. well, um, that's always the question. What about me? <laughs> Enough about them. Yeah. What about me? <laughs> so so it's, it's not classical menopause because women don't make any estrogen or testosterone or progesterone when their ovaries fail. Mm -hmm. But men just make a lower amount. Hypo means low. Gonadism means function of, of the gonads, which okay. is testicles. So, right. so when the testosterone gets too low for them, that may they may be used to having an 800, and it's down to 500, and that's too low. So they then get all these symptoms of low testosterone. That's what we call hypo or low gonadic function, okay. whether it be from your brain to your testicles or your testicles themselves. We don't differentiate. That's just low gonadal function. So that's what that's what we replace testosterone for. So one of the questions you have to resolve in determining whether or not it's a good fit and mm -hmm. this person ought to have their testosterone mm -hmm. replaced is whether or not they suffer from hypogonadism mm -hmm. and that's a contributor to their erectile dysfunction. That's true. But what if when you do the blood test and the numbers come back that they have plenty of testosterone mm -hmm. so it's not obviously low or hypogonadism mm -hmm. that's contributing. Uh, th there's another hormone that most men don't know they produce mm -hmm. which is called estrogen. Right. Uh, what if their estrogen is out of balance? How would you know that? Well, I check for estrone, which is the old man estrogen that w makes belly fat, and then belly fat makes more estrone. 
And all men make some estrogen, both estradiol and estrone, but estrone's the one that is out of whack first. So okay. I, I want I check for that on both, my both initial. Both men and women, and the both, estrone. Both men and women. And okay. it comes from the adrenal gland, not from the testicles, not from the ovaries. It initially comes from the, from the adrenal gland and fat tissue. So And we make more and more as we get older. So testosterone is Im, impaired by estrogen. It has a double whammy. When you have a lot of estrogen, even though you're making plenty of testosterone, estrogen binds up or stimulates a protein called sex hormone binding globulin, long word, SHBG, binds up and inactivates your testosterone. So if you're making enough, but you drink a lot or don't exercise or have genetics that make you obese or have diabetes or have prediabetes, you make a lot of estrone. So you could make enough testosterone, but none of it's working. So it's guys, all you're right bound all along up. That estrogen has been trying to destroy your testosterone your entire life. Yeah, but not from your wife. Well, no, I didn't or say, your I didn't partner. Say that. Yeah, you yeah, that's what you meant. <laughs> So, so that's one of the things I look for. So, so men are always surprised that I will, when we call them and say, you're not a candidate, or no. you may be a candidate, but we have to fix a few things first. Or could you see this other doctor? Because we found some issues and we'll send your lab mm -hmm. to them. And could you see them before you see us? So you do that to women all the time yeah. when they call. Mm -hmm. are, do men respond differently when you, when yeah. you call them? Oh, men you know, men are like, Hey, I thought I was just showing up for some testosterone. I said, no, no, I, I do a lot more than many of the clinics where you walk in, get a shot, you leave, and then they don't check much. They don't do really they say, evaluate meantime, you. While I wait to see my heart doctor, see if I, I'm healthy enough to have sex, can you give me some Cialis or Viagra or something? Uh, <laughs> no. Just, because, just to tide me over. Yeah, well, I hear that a lot, too. Yeah. But, but honestly... That's why I'm sending you the someone to the cardiologist, yeah, yeah, not, but, not you. These are... Yeah, we're these are <laughs> imaginary patients, but yeah. um, but I'm sending them to the cardiologist to make sure their heart is strong enough to have sex. So why would I give them something that might might cause them to have a heart attack or a stroke yeah. while they're waiting to see the cardiologist? That makes no sense, but it does to them because they don't really realize we've made Viagra, Cialis. Um, what's the other one? Anyway, th there's three of them, and that we've made them all the seem uh, Levitra. Levitra. We've made them all seem so safe and so common by all of the, all of the ads. Well, and as a simplistic solution, because <laughs> of all the ads on television, you think, oh, that's the solution. What we know is that is maybe 50, 60 percent of the men who take those drugs for ED, and that's all they do about ED. Mm -hmm. it, within a month or two, they're not taking the drugs. Because it doesn't, it doesn't solve their problem. It doesn't solve the it desire solves the problem. It solves issue, but it doesn't solve the desire problem. And the desire problem can be driven by low testosterone and loss of libido. Right. That's it can right. also be driven by relationship issues. You yeah. know, you've got to be honest with yourself. You don't want to have sex with somebody do, you don't get along with. Or if you're mad at them or if you're pouting, if you're being passive aggressive or passive mm -hmm. avoidant and they want you, then the easiest way for you to savage them without any guilt or responsibility is to say, oh, I'm not in the mood. I'm sorry. It's not working. And <laughs> so it doesn't work. Right. That's so, right. From the psychological are, standpoint, I can't really tell much about that when... I'm looking at just lab work and a medical history, but when so you get the, them in a room together. Yeah, I I love that. You can see. Something. Yeah, I'm not I I I'm not a psychologist and I or a counselor, so I get put in that position all the time, and I keep saying I'm not qualified to help your marriage. I'm just trying to physically treat your uh, def the deficiencies in the hormones, right. but but in any case, let let's go back to something that's more. Let's put the other side of our brain in to this. First of all, I look at this to see if someone's testosterone's normal. If their testosterone's normal, mm -hmm. then their estrogen's normal, their thyroid's normal, their adrenals normal. Should you just go down a checklist? I I go down the checklist. Then I there may be something they haven't written down, so we give them the option. I'm not going to treat you with testosterone unless there's some mitigating circumstances. So if you'd like to have an appointment, then we'll give you an appointment, but I'm not sa I'm not telling you that I'm going to treat you with testosterone. I it, we'll talk about it. Or if this is all you wanted, you wanted to know whether you needed it right now or not, mm -hmm. then fine, then wait another year if you still have or see your other doctor for these symptoms and then 
then we'll see. Eventually, you'll probably need it. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to treat you until you do need it. Okay. So, but in our conversation today, we're going through a, a sort of a triage list of symptoms. Mm -hmm. The more flagrant, the more intense, the more mm -hmm. critical first. Mm -hmm. And we back our way down the food chain. So mm -hmm. you, you check testosterone, you check estrogen. That doesn't seem to be the source of the mm -hmm. problem. So then you want to know about things like lifestyle. Let, mm -hmm. Let's talk about alcohol consumption. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about smoking. Well, in general, alcohol consumption will cause ED. A lot of alcohol. I mean, after you've been drinking alcohol all evening, you're not going to be able to perform in the bedroom. Uh, cocaine, eventually, or maybe even initially, that causes you not to be able to perform, which then sends me to the next question, why would people do it? But, um, I mean, yeah. that's kind of... It if, doesn't if make any sense. In sex. Right. That's right. So then the if you take certain medications, if diet pills right before having sex, that doesn't work very well because it's a vasoconstrictor and it decreases the blood flow to the pelvis and you're not going to be able to perform. So why would they take a diet pill? Uh, maybe it's Some part people of just regular... forgot to take it in the morning or okay. they, they have sex in the morning and they took their diet pill or their ADD medicine. And then they can't vasodilate, and so they can't get an erection. So I'm not just looking at hormones. I'm looking at hormones. I'm looking at, at their at other reasons why they could not perform or why they feel these things. So I'm looking at drugs. I'm looking at lifestyle. I'm looking, I mean, medications, uh, lifestyle, and then habits, which is no exercise because exercise stimulates testosterone and, and increases your ability to have blood flow. So that's always a good thing. If you don't exercise at all, that's a problem. Stress, that can decrease your ability to have, um, have an erection. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at all of these things plus the lab. And finally, I'm looking for another reason you have this besides these things, like maybe another disease such as Diabetes. Yes. People who have had long-standing diabetes have damaged both their nerves, which are necessary for an erection, for stimulation, and they've damaged their small blood vessels, which you need to have an erection to dilate and bring blood flow to the pelvis. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, testosterone may be okay, but if you've had long-standing diabetes, you've damaged these vessels. That's why I always tell people with early diabetes, lose weight now so that you don't get it. I mean, that you don't have that the rest of your life. Or I tell them, make sure your blood sugar stays in control. That means tight control, me meaning you don't just go eat whatever you can eat and cover it with insulin or medication because that's not going to keep your blood sugar low. Well, and we made a lot of progress with that. I mean, you don't, with, with neuropathy and diabetes, you don't see nearly the number of people that have foot amputations or True. leg amputations mm -hmm. for diabetes now that you saw 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But there still are blood flow issues. Oh, even if you don't have anything really obvious externally with your hands and feet right. or your lower extremities, you still have that ti tiny vessel damage from blood sugar. That's just what happens. It happens in your kidneys. So sometimes I, I don't see the damage. I can't tell that there's damage except by by the length of time that they've had diabetes, and they tell me, when I ask, how you know, what's your control? What do you try to keep your blood sugar? Where do you try to keep it? Right. And if they're like, oh, well, 250's fine, I'm like, oh, there's some damage there. You know, 250 is not fine. It's not fine. And so, I, you know, if, if we're looking at that, then I have to make those determinations. These are, half of these things are done before the patient comes in. I right. can kind of tell what's going to happen if I can give them testosterone or not, or do I need to solve a lot of other problems before I give them testosterone? But they need to know that when they walk in the door. They well, shouldn't think, oh, I'm getting testosterone, it's going to fix everything. They should know, well, maybe, maybe not, or absolutely not, I'm not giving you testosterone, we're going to have to work on everything else. And especially with diabetes. I mean, so many people play games with their diabetes to try to keep their numbers around 250 mm -hmm. or to, to say, oh, it was really good. For three days and so now i can have ice cream and they they will do the same thing and so they're they're dishonest with themselves about the consistency of their standard and what you're trying to talk to people about is a global health look right for for healthy aging you know we need to get this under control we don't want to just throw 
uh, a Viagra at it once a week and say, mm -hmm. well, because that helps me with the erection, now I'm all okay and that's all I have to do. Mm -hmm. So when, when you talk to them about replacing testosterone, controlling the estrogen, controlling the diabetes, controlling the thyroid, I mean, you balance all these things mm -hmm. And that's in very the important. course of your treatment. It's not enough just to give a hormone. But that's why it's, you need to see them face to face. That's right. That's and, right. And a lot of the face to face stuff that then comes up, and about which I think you are very good, is making appropriate referrals. Because many mm -hmm. of these things are compounded by or aggravated by relational, emotional, lifestyle mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. that are not just chemistry set physiology. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they connect somewhere and you mm -hmm. hover right around that connection line mm -hmm. of this could be a chemical solution but you need to watch your diet this could be a chemical solution or you solution, need to see a counselor or you need to see a counselor or both which you know, usually when, people when i say that they yeah. just keep fighting right <laughs> we need to get you to a counselor where does what do you think doc i don't have an opinion because i'm not a counselor <laughs> i mean that kind of stuff i i don't know how to fix that that's right. your thing yeah so overall the message is mm -hmm. that even though I give most of the patients that come into my office testosterone, mm -hmm. I send people away before they get there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes testosterone is not going to work, even though somebody has a low testosterone, like for a diabetic, for ED, it may work for everything else. Or it may make them healthier, but it doesn't always fix everything that you've done to, done to your body over the last... 40 or 50 years. So, so it practice, is not the only answer, but I'm looking at other answers. So the practice that you run is a highly personalized professional operation. It's mm -hmm. not a high volume discount store. One size no. fits all. Everybody just needs the magic panacea. You really need to spend time with your patients. You spend face time with them. Your and my nurse practitioners do as well. An hour. They've been, they've been and, with me 20 they years. They all know what I'm going to say. Yeah. So the, literal assumption of well i can just call your office and get testosterone is an invalid assumption it's inaccurate mm -hmm. and you pre-sort a lot of people away before mm -hmm. they would ever get to your office because they're not at this moment in time qualified candidates right and and if you look at the web pages you're trying to make a decision is this a, a doctor that i want to contact is this money that i need to talk to about what's going on in my life the websites say that you know not everybody is a candidate and sometimes other things need to happen first you need mm -hmm. to get your diabetes under control or you need to uh get your what was the word about heavy metals in your blood that you were using uh heavy metals oh hemochromatosis hemochromatosis, hemochromatosis fixed. under control mm -hmm. before we can determine whether or not this treatment will help you and 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 i'm trying to increase the the response rate the I'm trying to, not to help my numbers because my numbers don't matter, but I'm trying to help people not waste their money if I can't help them. Because, but what, what we do is not covered by insurance. So I don't want them to have to come in and pay something and then not be happy with the outcomes. So that's why I'm trying to pre-sort them. I want them to go to the right place. And if it's covered by insurance, great. And then come to me for the other things. Well, and that's why you wrote the book that you mm -hmm. wrote. And that's why you try to train other doctors who are interested in learning to do what you do the way that you do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's a thing about which you are extremely passionate and professional. Why treat disease when you can prevent it? It's a great question. Why treat disease when you can prevent it? Thank you for watching. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.